Good evening, everyone. I'll call this Committee of uh, Adjustment Hearing to order. Um, before we get started this evening, I'm just going to go through the Committee's uh, protocols for tonight's meeting. Um, we have three properties with six applications. Uh, some properties have multiple applications for them. We'll be hearing tonight. Um, for those that are here, there's notice, uh, notices on the desk, I think, at the back uh, for that purpose that has the agenda. A couple housekeeping items. Would you please turn off any cell phones or place them on silent mode uh, if you have them and you're here? And if you do come up to speak to an application, please, uh, the podium is on the right. Um, please ask any questions that you have and address them through the chair, not directly to the person uh, being asked the question. First order business of the committee will be uh, to be at. Uh, Sorry, to ask any members if they have any pecuniary interests or conflicts of interest with any of the applications this evening. Following that, a request will be made for any deferrals or withdrawals of applications. If the applicant is coming in electronically, uh, I will re-ask that again at that point when they get brought into the meeting. Committee Secretary Treasurer will then read out each application noted on the agenda with a brief description and staff recommendation. Um, I will note that when we get to each property, if there's multiple applications, she'll go through them all for that property at that time. Uh, the agent or the uh, applicant or the agent for the applicant will be asked to come forward. They can go to the podium on the right, introduce themselves, and will be allotted a short overview to add any additional details if they wish at that time. Members of the committee will then have the opportunity to ask the applicant any questions that they might have, um, following by members of the public that wish to speak to the application. Any members of the public wishing to speak to the application will be asked to come forward, state their name and address, try to limit their comments to 10 minutes, and must address all questions or comments that they have within that time frame um, and keep it pertinent to that application or applications. We do it by property uh, in that time frame. Persons making a presentation will not necessarily be allowed to return again to speak on the same application. Following all comments, the applicant will be afforded some closing comments if desired. Uh, the committee will then present the decision in the form of a motion. A uh, motion will be discussed and voted upon. If a vote is tied, a motion will be defeated and a new motion will be made. Uh, if a motion is defeated, new motions will be made until a decision has been reached. Notices of decision will only be provided to those persons that leave their name and address uh, in writing with the Secretary Treasurer. For those in attendance, there's a sign-in page at the back of the room for that purpose. For anyone that's viewing online, um, you can email Taya Taraba after, uh, after this meeting at T A Y A period T A R A B A at portcoburn.ca, or you can call 905 835 2900 extension 204 and leave a message um, requesting the same. They'll need your name and address for the record. It should also be noted that in order to be kept advised of any possible Ontario Land Tribunal hearings, Person must request, persons must request and be sent a copy of the committee's decision on an application. Um, and I just wanted to point out for those that are, I think we have a few people online uh, that are going to be speaking to applications. Um, we'll bring you in at that time. Uh, we'll normally do the people here that are in person first and then we'll bring you in one at a time uh, online. Um, so with that, is, uh, that's the process that we have for tonight. Is there any conflicts of interest for any of the applications this evening? And I don't know if we have any uh, requests for deferrals or withdrawals of applications. Are all the applicants here? All here? Okay, perfect. So with that, um, Madam Secretary, the first application, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. On the agenda tonight, we have two minor variance applications and four consent applications. Notice of the applications were circulated to the public on March 27th. The required agencies received notice of the applications on March 11th. A recommendation report for each application was prepared by planning staff and made publicly available on April 5th and April 9th. All correspondence received by April 5th were addressed in the recommendation reports. Those interested can view the recommendation reports online on the city's website or in person at City Hall. Those interested may also contact planning staff in person, by email, or over the phone to obtain a copy of the reports. Accommodation for alternative methods of viewing or obtaining the recommendation reports are available upon request. Please note, the zoning bylaw currently in effect is the City of Port Colburn Zoning Bylaw 6575-3018 as amended, which will henceforth be referred to as the zoning bylaw. It is also to be noted that an error was made on the variances AO224PC and AO324PC in which the requested relief reads maximum as opposed to minimum. Staff have noted the error and will seek to provide a revised copy. 
Our first application tonight is consent application B0624PC for the lands municipally known as 211 Charlotte Street in the second density residential zone as established in the zoning bylaw. The agent, Kara Morziuk, on behalf of the owners 1448022 Ontario Limited, are requesting the committee's consent to sever for the purpose of creating a new residential lot and an establishing a servicing easement. The subject parcels are shown as parts 1, 2, and 3 on the proposed sketch where part 1 is to be severed for a future residential use, part 2 is to be retained for an existing residential use, and part 3 is to be established as a servicing easement for part 1. Given the recommendation reports, planning staff recommend that the prospective consent application be granted subject to the conditions outlined in the staff report dated April 5, 2024. That concludes the correspondence for this application. Thank you. Is the agent or the applicant here this evening? Uh, there's a little podium on the right. There's a little red button right in the middle of that gray bar in front of you. You just push that. Oh, on the gray, the there gray, we there we go. It's okay. Is there anything further you'd like to add at this time? Uh, no, the garage is already down. Um, they have no problem with the daylighting triangle, and we've already, um, I'm just about to send through the stuff to retain the archaeological assessments, so... If there's any other questions, I don't have anything else to add right now. Perfect. Thank you. Does any members of the committee have any questions? Eric? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, to the applicant. Um, this is a, 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 an exterior lot. Yes. Correct. Um, with the daylight triangle and it being a fairly small lot, what's, do you have a building envelope? Oh, yeah. That, okay, what would be this? Well, the... The daylight triangle, sorry, Mr. Chair, go ahead. go ahead with your question. I'm sorry, didn't you? Okay. Um, so the day, yeah, with the daylight triangle, and then there's the exterior rear yard setbacks for a dwelling are usually, um, exterior, sorry, exterior side yard setbacks are usually greater than a typical interior side yard setback. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering how the building envelope will be impacted. It is, what, what is the building envelope essentially? Well, Mr. Chair, from what I understand, the daylight triangles on the corner Charlotte and Fielden, and the building lot that we're creating it doesn't even touch onto Charlotte Street, so the building envelope isn't impacted at all. That's staying on the retained. That's coming off the retained portion, the remnant parcel. Um. Okay, I, yeah, I see that with, in terms of the daylight triangle. I guess it's just more also though with the Lockmaster Lane and Fielden Avenue, part one is still an exterior lot, so there's still like a side yard setback. But I don't know, I, I don't see, don't know what the exact dimensions are required, but it just seems like it would be quite a small building envelope. But um, I mean, that's why I'm just wondering if you have a, a square area measurement or anything. On the building envelope? Yeah, what could be the potential Pardon? building envelope for that? Well, the, like I said, the daylighting triangle is coming off of Charlotte and Fielden, not off of Lockmaster, not off the lane, as far as I understand. So nothing is changing on the remnant parcel. I'm, I'm referring to part one. Oh, part one? I do have a building envelope back at the office, but I didn't... It meets the minimum requirements I was looking at for a building envelope. I've done one. So and they may uh, approach council or committee adjustment for a minor variance for a minimum, like for relief, minor relief for setbacks if they, depending on what they decide to build. They haven't come up with a decision yet what they're building there. Okay, thanks. Okay. Anyone else have any questions? Well, through, through you, uh, I think Denise has a... Yeah, yeah, if you have a comment, that'd be helpful. Yeah, through the chair, did you want me to clarify just a few things, just to help out, Councillor? Yeah, if you don't mind. Yeah, so just looking at the plans, um, the request, and mm, quite echoey. Oh, yeah, seems to be going away. Oh, that, oh, sorry. No De Denise, just turn on your mic again. <laughs> Thanks, there we go. Uh, just looking at the, the report and the comments, the, the site triangle was on part two. There's an existing dwelling on there. Um, part one, we have not asked for a site triangle um, to the laneway. Uh, engineering team did not ask for that, just for your information. All right, any other questions? Okay. 
Is there any members of the public that wish to speak to this application this evening? Not seeing any? We don't have anyone online for that one. Gary, you got a question? No. Oh, okay. We could do that. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. With respect to application B06 slash 24 PC, legally known as Plan 27, Lot 228, New Plan 786, municipally known as 211 Charlotte Street. The consent application B06 24 PC be granted subject to the conditions outlined in the staff report dated April 10th, 2024, for the following reasons. One, the application is consistent with the provincial policy statement and conforms to the growth plan for the Greater Golden Horseshoe, the region official plan, City of Port Coburn official plan, and will also comply with the provisions of Zoning Bylaw 6575-30-18 as amended. Thank you. A seconder to that. Angie, questions or comments? All those in favor? That'll be carried. Thank you. Thank you very much. Madam Secretary, whenever you're ready for the next application, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I will now introduce consent applications B0324 PC and B0424 PC. The subject lands are municipally known as Seven Petersburg Circle, located in the light industrial zone. In the application B0324 PC, the agent Jason Brower, on behalf of the owner Peter Vivine, are requesting the committee's consent to sever for the purpose of creating a new industrial lot. The subject parcels are shown as parts two and three on the proposed sketch, where part two is to be severed for a future industrial use, and part three is to be retained for a future industrial use. In the application BO424 PC, the agent on behalf of the owner are requesting for consent to sever for the purpose of merging two industrial lots. The subject parcels are shown as parts one and four on the proposed sketch, where part one is to be merged with part four. Given the recommendation reports, planning staff recommends that the prospective consent applications be granted subject to the conditions outlined in the staff report dated April 5th, 2024. That concludes correspondence for these applications. Thank you. Is the agent or the applicant here this evening? Just a little red button in the, yeah, it's the one. Is there anything further you'd like to add at this time? Uh, no, I have nothing to add. I think the uh, staff report summarizes everything now. Any questions or comments? Not seeing any. Is there any members of the public that wish to speak to this application this evening? Not seeing any, and we don't have anyone online for that. Mm -hmm. All right, very good. Um, Angie? Thank you. Um, I'll move this. Okay. I'll move them both in block. Sounds yeah, yeah. good? All right. So application B0424PC and B0324BC. Uh, le legally known as part lot 29, concession 3, municipally known as 7 Peterburg, uh, Peterburg, Petersburg Circle, sorry, uh, that the consent application BO324 PC and BO424 PC be granted subject to the conditions outlined in the staff report dated uh, April 10, 24, uh, 2024. For the following reasons, the application is uh, consistent with the provincial policy statement and conforms to the growth plan for the Greater Golden Horseshoe and regional official plan, City of Port Colburn official plan, and will also comply with the provisions of zoning bylaw 6575-3018 as amended. Thank you. A seconder to that. Gary, questions or comments? All those in favor? Uh, that'll be carried. Thank you. There's a 20-day waiting period, but other than that, we're good to go. Thank you. And Madam Secretary, whenever you're ready for the last uh, property that we'll be looking at. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Our last applications for tonight are consent application B0524PC and its two accompanying minor variance applications AO224PC and AO324PC. The subject lands are municipally known as a vacant lot on Fire Lane 3 in Lakeshore Residential Zone. In the application B0524PC, the owners Peter Smith and Donna Bonaldo are requesting the committee's consent to sever for the purpose of creating a new residential lot. The subject parcels are shown as parts 1 and 2 in the proposed sketch, where part 1 is to be severed for a future residential use and part 2 is to be retained for a future residential use. 
In the application A of 224 PC, the agent and their client are requesting, no, the, the owners are requesting for the relief for the provisions of the zoning bylaw to permit the reduction of lot frontage in area, notwithstanding the following. That the minimum lot frontage of 18.4 meters be permitted, whereas 30 meters is required, and the minimum of a lot area of 845 meters squared be permitted, whereas a minimum of 0.4 hectares is required. In the application AO324 PC, the owners are requesting for relief from the provisions of the zoning bylaw to permit the reduction in lot frontage and area, notwithstanding the following. The reduced lot frontage of 23.5 meters be permitted, whereas 30 meters is required, and that a minimum lot area of 1,018 meters squared be permitted, whereas a minimum of 0.4 hectares is required. Given the information in the recommendation report, planning staff recommends application AO224 PC and AO324 PC be granted as the applications are minor in nature, they are appropriate for the development of the site, they are desirable and in compliance with the general intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw, and they are desirable and in compliance with the general intent and purpose of the official plan. Given the recommendation reports, planning staff also recommend that the respective consent application be granted, subject to the conditions outlined in the staff report dated April 9, 2024. This report can be requested for viewing by the public, if desired, through the planning staff. That concludes the correspondence for these applications. Thank you. Is the applicant or the agent for the applicant here this evening? I gotta sit down here. Yeah, no worries. Well, this is deja vu. FYI, this is the second time round for this, and this is the first thing I want to discuss. This was already approved. I got a list, a very specific list from the city as to what I would have to do in order the conditions that, uh, to be met. Such things as uh, the drainage appropriate uh, pr appointment agreement be completed by the city's drainage supervisor. There's a total of seven of them. So round about, I build for a living. Round about October, I started working on it. Yes, I had two years to do it, but it doesn't take much time to do this. And then number six came up, that the owner enter into a development agreement to implement the recommendations of the hydrological assessment prepared by Terra Dynamics Consulting Inc. That's why I'm here today. Jamie Campbell, who is the hydrological consultant for the region who did it for these lots. I had nine lots there. I brought Jamie out, I said, what is the, the best way? He said, well, we could do three, but it would be better if you do two, Pete. I said, fine, we'll do two. I then phoned Jamie, this is in November. And l let me say, the planning staff here is great, okay? Like Tanya's a, she's a good girl. Now that I know she's a commissioner and all. Um, you know, so I phoned Jamie and Jamie goes, I don't know what they're talking about. I came to the city and Tanya can tell you this. Nobody knew what this was. So I had to wait till Chris Room got back. When Chris came back, he said, no, we need time to do that. And I said, what do you mean you need time to do it? it, it and he says, well, it goes to our lawyers and it's going to take four to five weeks, Pete, and then you're past the deadline. So this has cost me $6,000 to put this application in a second time because it's not specific in the application. We need six weeks time before the end of this in order to get it to our lawyers. Everything else is very, very exact. I had never seen any clause like that. Jamie Campbell had never seen any clause like that. So now I've spent six grand to come here a second time. So what I'm asking the committee for is, can we get a little bit of leeway here? I've had to pay the region more money again. Because, yes, I didn't get it in in the two years, but the reason I couldn't get it in in the two years, nobody at the town knew what it was about until Chris came back. So, to your first point. That's the first point. To, to, no, to, yeah. I'll hold you there. So the... the as far as time duration, you have two years. There's nothing we can do about that. Yeah. As far as how long it takes, that's not the committee's issue here. Okay, so who do I speak to? Because this, like everything else is very, very exact in this, except for 
you've got to get it to us by six weeks before the expiry date. Well, the, the, I think you've already talked to staff and they said it'd take about four to six weeks. Yeah. That's well under two years. It, okay. So you're aware of it now. I'm aware of it now. If it had been in the letter, I would have been aware of it then. I, I, I have I, never, and, and I deal with this I, all the time. I, I don't want to get into a yeah. discussion with okay. you over, it, over the previous application. Yeah. Um, it's in there again this time, so now you're aware of it. So now you yeah, so assuming it becomes part of the requirements. Yeah, like it's done now because Jamie knows what it is. So now today I've got two neighbors here who are going to oppose what had already been approved. I find it incredulous that one of the neighbors, well, both of them built new houses. And if I, if I look at the square footage of the houses versus the size of the lot, they couldn't build it under today's code. What we are building is not big monster houses. We're building a 1,200 square foot, which is 20 by 40. I've got a 60 foot lot. That's 20 feet on either side. If you look at the fire lane, there are small properties all the way along the fire lane. It, it, I'm not building anything special. I've got new people who have built monster homes who don't want us there building. That's, that's not what this town's about. I'm going to build two affordable homes in that area. You know, one lot is 60 odd feet, the other is 76 feet. And, and like if you look at normally you're six feet between houses, I'm going to be 30 or 40 feet. I can't see, the only thing they can complain about is it's not exactly the code, but I've talked to the planning department and this is a minor variance. You know, and again, this has already been approved once. It, it, no, nothing's changing with it. It was not, there were no uh, concerns at all the first time through. And now I've got new neighbors there and they don't want new, more houses on their fire lane. I find that ridiculous. That's it. That's it. Thank you. You, you can stay there if you like. Oh, okay. Does anyone have any questions for the applicant? No? All right. We're, we're you good for now? Okay. Um, so, so with that, if you want, you could just have a seat in front just in case something comes up again. All right. I'm, I'm going to go to the, the public for anyone that wants to speak to this application. I'll start with in, in attendance. So if anyone wants to speak to this, sir, uh, please come up. Red button in the middle. Name and address for the records and uh, try to get all your comments in, in 10 minutes. And, and I also might remind you just right in the middle of that gray bar in front of you. There you go. And, and please stay germane to the application this evening. I really don't want to care about what kind of house he's going to build. It's to the application to severing the lots and the, the variances that are being proposed. Okay. So if you can keep your comments to that, that would be great. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. absolutely. Uh, my name is Chino Stinziani. Uh, my wife and I live at 2591 Fire Lane 3, which is directly due east of uh, uh, the property in question. Uh, as you know, the fire lanes uh, along the lake, uh, there's Fire Lane 1, 2, and 3. They're relatively wide lots, big lots, uh, typically uh, homes that are well, uh, significantly larger in terms of lots than the lot size as a whole. Uh, that the applicant is uh, owns and um, we typically if you walk down the lanes or if you go along I'm sure you've all been down fire lane one two three four five it's a wooded lot very kind of wide open the properties are relatively large large some are smaller homes on smaller properties uh, but all of the properties are larger than uh, the property in question that Mr. Smith is looking to uh, divide. Um, we, um, we object to the fact that the lot that is already relatively small because uh, the total lot is just about 18,000 square feet. Sorry, I'm still thinking. I'm at that age where I'm just over the threshold. I can think in both, but it, square feet seems to work better in my mind versus what is required by law, which is 43,000 square feet, 0.4 of a hectare. 
So it's the property itself as a whole is I think I calculated 54% smaller than what the bylaw recommends. So it's relatively sp small to speak, but to divide it in two makes one property 75% smaller than what the bylaw um, requires and the other one 79% smaller than what the bylaw requires. So the two properties um, are very small in terms of size versus what else is on uh, the fire lane. Now I'm not sure where Mr. Smith has been walking up and down the laneway, but I can assure you that if you were to go on your own and walk up, you'd see that there are no properties on our fire lane, and I can attest to fire lane one, two, and three as well, because I've walked them and fire lane five that are smaller than the lot in question. So I'm not sure what uh, property he's referring to that are smaller. But our concern is that um, we understand the pressure that the city has to obviously build more homes as you know we hear it from all of the political levels and we have an issue in Canada about that and we have an issue locally about that. So we don't have a problem with the idea that Peter wants to build on the entire lot I mean, even though it's 54% smaller than required, it would fit into the area. It would fit into what is a lakeshore residential type of environment. It's still smaller than what is required by law, but I think it still would fit in and it would fit into the rest of the profile within the fire lane. Um, what we have a problem with, or my wife and I have a problem with, is that by dividing the property into two lots, one of 55 or 56 feet in frontage and the other one of 78 feet is you end up with one part property in particular the 50 footer which is really small and inconsistent with what's on the fire lane inconsistent with what's on all of the fire lanes and inconsistent with what's in the general neighborhood so if you're familiar with the neighborhood fire lane three you go down pinecrest road to the lakeside you turn left Fire lane three goes for about a quarter mile. Well, actually, yeah, 400 meters or so. Yeah, maybe a quarter mile. And then all around from the lakeshore along Pinecrest, right up to Vimy Ridge Road, if you go east along Vimy Ridge Road, all the way to the park, uh, Centennial Umberstone Park, they're all not not, a lot of them don't meet the zoning requirement that's there today of 43,000 square feet, but they're all substantially bigger than the lot that uh, Peter is suggesting. So in our mind, there's a beautiful lot, build a home on it, it you're welcome, but to fit two of them seems way against the character of what the fire lane is and what all of the homes are within a mile of the home and all along the lake shore in all of the fire lanes, starting from fire lane one right through fire lane five and beyond. Even if you go across to the other side, you've got fire lane 10 and 15. They're all big lots with big homes on them. And um, we welcome the idea of having one home on that lot. Uh, we struggle to understand how you can uh, justify fitting two lots and then the other concern is that if we allow one home to be built on less than 60 feet well I'm turning into development and I'm going to start buying all sorts of waterfront properties and splitting them into thousand square foot lots and building more homes because I don't see how you can allow this and then not allow further development in the area for very small lots on the lake front and then it basically kills the whole idea of having lakeside residential. If you want to live on a small lot, there's other areas within the city that will allow those lots. So that is our concern, and that is why we're here to um, address and, and vo vocalize our concern. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions for the presenter? Not seeing any? Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the crowd that would like to speak to this one? Uh, no. There, all right. Hi, my name's Jim Simo. Um, I live across the street and one lot over due west 
no, yeah, due west of the uh, properties, Peter's property and Donna's, 2545 Fire Lane 3 is the address. Uh, just one correction. Uh, Peter stated that we're against having him build a house and him and Donna build a house. I'm not against, and my wife is not against him and Donna building a house there. Okay, uh, no problem with that. Our concern is, is taking a undersized lot and cutting it even smaller and squeezing two on. Now, part of the attraction of Fire Lane 3, and, and Gino talked a lot, so I'm not going to repeat what he said, but that is part of the Carolinian forest all the way along the fire lanes. And part of the beauty is, is turning down our fire lane, and it always, the minute I, we turn down there, it's trees, it's beautiful, all right? It's nature, it's birds flying around, squirrels jumping around, chipmunks, okay? This afternoon, my neighbor and I, while we're touching base, seeing how his wife was doing, fox runs right down the fire lane past us, right, with its dinner in its mouth, but that's okay. <laughs> and taking off towards their lot and towards Gino, all right? Living out there is about being in touch with nature. Now, my lot is not, does not meet LR either, okay? We bought a place, had an existing cottage and a little junky garage falling over. We knocked it down. We did our ultimate best to put it right on top of where the existing stuff was, and we did accomplish that, okay? We lost one pine tree, and it was not, we didn't cut it down because of it was in the footprint, but being near the hole, right, the roots were considered unstable and high risk of falling down or blowing over. Since then, we planted nine trees to replace one that we lost during our construction. If one house is built on this proposed lot, right, which we, I have no problem with, my wife has no problem with, I don't think any of the neighbors have a problem with, you will need to take out some trees, absolutely, do some leveling, all right, to put in your water system, your tank, whatever way you're going well, some type of a septic system, but you can maintain a good chunk of the property and as far as the natural part of the property, the trees in the back, okay, the oak trees and everything else that's back there, and stays within the character of that entire area of Port Colburn. Now you take that and you try and squeeze in two properties, well, you're basically and Peter maybe has the details how many trees he's going to need to take out, but my opinion is in order to squeeze that in, put two septic systems in, water systems, whatever they are, you're going to take out most of the trees, if not clear cut, almost the entire lot. All right, totally not within character. This is not a city lot like we expect in town where you're lucky if you have one tree. Okay, we're trying to maintain that character look. For not only for myself, but for everybody and everybody else that goes up and down those fire lanes and enjoys it. So besides what Gino said, that's one of my concerns. More than happy to let you build a house there, Peter. I think that's fantastic. It's a beautiful spot for a, a home. But chopping it up even smaller now, trying to squeeze two in, I just think it does not fit in and totally against that part of it. Okay, any questions for the presenter? Not seeing any. All right, thank you. Thanks. Anyone else in the gallery wishes to speak to this application? You already had your chance, sir. I, I, I mentioned at the start, you got one shot at it, so. The ones that are online, I'm going to get to them next. So with that, there's no one else in-house, so we'll go to the first one online. Hi, can you hear me? Uh, we can hear you. Can't see you, but we can hear you. Uh, do you want to see me as well? You can see me too. Oh, there we go. Just your name and uh, address for the record, please. Sure. My name is Alison Oleksiak. Um, we have properties on 2579 Far Lane 3 as well as 2580 Far Lane 3. You Very good. good. Floor's yours. Sure. Um, so my questions are actually uh, some inconsistencies in the application that um, was sent to us. And it was also, um, we participated in the hydrological study and we were actually told we were going to get the report, but we never actually received it. 
Um, so the first inconsistency that I found was that in the application referenced, um, the first one is the, let me start with the uh, B0524PC. It actually references lots 31 to 33 and lots 57 to 58. But the documentation that was shared with us actually indicates there's six um, parcels, not five parcels. And the reports and recommendations reference six parcels as well. So I'd like to understand why there's a difference in terms of the application and what the um, assessments were that were provided as input to the recommendations. Because from what I can tell, there's one parcel that's missing, which is the lot 59. To, to your point, I believe all six are there. Uh, they might have missed labeling one of them in their report, but all six are, are there. So the application is including lot 59, right? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, so 50, can, can they- 57 to 59 the, and 31 to 33. Okay, so can the, the documentation be updated to reflect that? Uh, there was a staff report that was uh, amended that uh, Taya mentioned at the start of the meeting um, that has the specifics of those lots. But yes. Yeah, I actually have the April 9th one that she referenced, and that one still did not say 59. Yeah, they're, they're in the process of updating, updating that one online. Okay, so that will be provided. Um, and so in that context, um, it says that the, the, the um, I guess there's going to be similar updates that's going to be applied to the uh, recommendations in terms of you're going to update the recommendation part number four and part number five. Are those going to be updated to reflect all the lots that are being included as well? Correct. Okay, so and just so I'm clear, so for recommendation number four, for part number two, it's going to include lot 20, 20, 32, 33, as well as it's youth, including the 57, 58, is that right? Yes. Okay, so those, so those, that's, those things are going to be updated too, right? The answer is yes, right? Okay, and then in terms of the recommendations, um, because our concern is actually to do with the hydrological study that was done and where the placement of the sewage as well as the, the sewage systems as well as the water systems. So there's a reference to the report and we'd actually participated in the report and we were told we would receive a copy, but we never received a copy. And we asked, also asked for a copy of the recommendation that was actually referenced in the application. But again, that wasn't provided to us. And the so, reason why we're asking is because we're within 100 feet of those two properties and we're concerned what the impact is going to have in our property in terms of what that recommendation is and what variances are being approved. Denise, do you want to answer that? Through the chair to the member of the public, I did reach out to the region to get the final draft or the final, I should say, of the hydrogeological study and we're happy to send it to the to the speaker. So how can we make it, how can we actually provide our comments today without having that information? Well, with respect to what we're hearing, the requirement is to have one. In this particular case, they started one with the previous application, so you do have a draft. In a lot of the cases, we wouldn't even have that report yet. It would only be a requirement to have the report before it's uh, as a condition. Sorry, we never received the draft. It's online. It's on, it's on the uh, website. I'm not, sorry, I don't believe the hydrological report's on, on online. I'm looking at it right now. Okay, can that, we actually asked for that information. So can some, if somebody can send that to us, because we actually asked beforehand to get the information. Like I said, it was posted on the, the website. There was a link to it, so. Uh, hopefully but you regard, can get the regardless, <laughs> regardless of whether it's there or not, the requirement that the staff's recommending is that they do a, do a, a study Right. And in this particular case, there is a draft done already from the previous application. A lot of the right. times we wouldn't even have that at this point. So, okay. But wouldn't you, but aren't you waiting for that input for you to, for, in order for you to get the recommendations from, in terms of the applicability of the use of the land? No, because it becomes a condition. So if they do the study and it seems that they can't build on it, 
then they don't get their variance or their consent. Well, will, there be a, will there be a reference to that in terms of your the recommendations here? Because I don't see that in your recommendations right now, in terms of that as being a condition. Um, through the chair to, to the committee members, you'll notice a condition in the list of conditions that speaks to the development agreement. That development agreement um, is required in order to ensure that the conditions of the hydrogeological study are implemented. Okay, so, so that's not the applicant six. applies for the development agreement. If he hasn't already, I, I don't know the status of it. Um, then that would ensure that the the recommendations of the hydrogeological study are are carried forward. So there is okay. a condition that that is related to it. Okay, so number six. So those conditions um, that are listed in the B0524 PC, those conditions, are those going to carry over to the other minor variances in terms of those the recommendations? I believe those conditions are based on the severance, the consent application, not the variances. Right. So so how how can you have these the if the recommendations only apply to the severance, then why do we not have similar analysis showing up for the variances? Because wouldn't the hydrological recommendations apply to the variances? In fact, more so because of the the, the reduction in terms of the size of the parcel of land? Without getting a full-blown argument with you, they're all part and parcel of the same thing. Uh, the consents and the, the variances all go together. If you, can't grant the, if you can't meet the requirements of the consent, you can't have variances on lots that don't exist. Okay, so what you're saying is, is that as long, so you're saying that there is a, there is a downflow of the conditions that you've got within the consent to the variances is what you're saying. Is that fair? If, if they're not there, typically that's usually the part of it is that the variances have to also be granted for the consent to happen, yes. Uh, yes, but what I'm asking is, is the downflow of the recommendations. Because right now there's four recommendations against the variances, but those recommendations are not they don't reflect the recommendations that you've got within the severance. So I'm just asking whether the recommendations that are in the severance, are those recommendations also going to be applicable to the variance? The, the, the only I, I'm, fine, I'm fine. If you, if you put in the two variances and just say that the recommendations that are part of the severance flow down into the variances, then I'm fine. I'm just trying to confirm because you've got you've got way more detail under your severance in terms of what the recommendations are in terms of the land use that you're not applying right now. It doesn't, I mean, if I looked at it individually, it doesn't seem to, that doesn't seem to apply to the variance. Do you want me to respond? Sure. Through the chair to the member of the public, there's different tests in terms of how we evaluate a consent application versus a minor variance application. Minor yep. variance applications, we have to look at the four tests under the Planning Act, which you'll see outlined in those two variance applications. Yep. In terms of the consent, the consent has to meet the official plan as well as provincial policy. So there's a different level of analysis that we would have undertaken for the consent application versus the minor variance applications. The minor variance applications are just related to lot area and lot frontage. In order to, to create the lot for the consent, that's where the conditions for the hydrogeological study are um, pertinent for the application. So they're not for the minor variance. And as mentioned by the, the chair, the three applications go together. You need the variances to be approved in order for the consent to proceed. And you need to clear the conditions of the consent in order for the lots to be, the lot to be created. Okay, great. Okay, so what, what I'm basically hearing in summary is you're making some updates to these documents because you recognize that there were some inconsistencies in terms of the lots, um, and that's going to get published is what I heard. Um, in terms of the the recommendations and the outstanding in terms of some of the analysis, um, you believe that that's covered because you put the condition number six around the hydrological assessment um, that and that you're going to share with us. You said you're going to share that. You're just waiting for the final report is what I heard, right? Okay, yes, and so chair, we can send you the, the hydrogeological study if you don't have it, no problem. Uh, but you said there's a draft version, but there's a revised version that, that's coming through, right? Yes, we do have a final version, and, and you're happy to, uh, we're happy to send okay. it to you as it's public information. Okay, great. And then based on that, we get a sense as to what the potential impact would be to us. Um, and because that's a condition on here, that when the building permit gets put forward, that at that point, if there's any issues, we can raise it then. 
through through the chair um, no um, this is the opportunity to provide your comments the once uh, if the committee does approve the application the consents sorry the conditions are cleared by staff so the one condition is that a development agreement uh, be enacted to address the conditions of the hydrogeological study if those are cleared through the development agreement which staff process then that condition gets cleared it's not a public process anymore same with the building what? permit process is not a public process if, if they come in for a building permit and it meets zoning then they'll get their building permit obviously subject to all the plans etc but those are not um, public processes anymore okay but essentially what you're saying is is you haven't published to us the final version of that hydrological assessment for us to be able to comment on it in this forum to rate and or to have any point of view in terms of whether it's going to have impact to us or not um, through the chair to the member of the public the hydrogeological study uh, often is a condition of the consent so we don't even see the hydrological studies at this point in the process um, now we do have a final copy uh, as i did provide it so we're happy to to provide that but just note that often we don't even have it at this point Usually it's a condition of the consent and then after the approval, the applicant uh, would go away and retain their consultant to undertake the hydrogeological study. Okay, so I, I think, as I said, my, my concern is really in that space, just because of how close we are and what the impact's gonna be in terms of the land use in order to actually meet the sewage as well as water requirements. Well, like, like I said, and Denise has reiterated, Normally, you wouldn't even have that report at this stage, draft or otherwise. So you have the advantage of at least having the draft. So with that, you're close to your 10 minutes. Is there anything further you'd like to add at this time? Nope, I'm fine. Thank you. Is there any questions of the presenter? Not seeing any. Okay, thank you. I'll tell you, whenever you can bring in the next person, that'd be great. Again, Kate. There you go. Can you hear me? Okay. Are you're we there? To, you're good to go. Name and address for the record, please. My name is Tim, T I M Drury, D R U R Y. I live in Amherst in New York, 14226. My, floor, my floor relevant, yours. Hello, hello? The floor is yours. My relevant comments are based on the fact that uh, I've lived in this area for 70 years. My father bought the house in 1954. I'm a summer resident. <laughs> and uh, I live there with uh, my uh, seven siblings. Actually, we're six now. One died. And I can speak on four of the seven, six siblings that we oppose the... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, Peter and, and Donna's uh, plan, as far as because it would dry, destroy the ambience of the neighborhood. So I, um, what what uh, Gino and what uh, uh, Jim uh, uh, Jim Simo um, said is, is entirely accurate. 
So anyway, there we are. I'm friends with the, with the Smiths, but uh, I I have to be to uh, be outspoken in this regard. Is that all you'd like to add at this time? That's all, sir. Thank you. Any questions? I'm not seeing any. Thank you, sir. Hello. Hello. Name, Hi, my, name and address for the record, please. My name is Libby Drury, Elizabeth Drury. I um, live at 138 North 19th Street in Fernandina Beach, Florida. Um, my brother just spoke. I um, have uh, lived, spent most of my summers uh, at uh, 2547 uh, Fire Lane 3. And we've owned the uh, property um, since uh, 1954. Um, and um, I uh, have never, I've looked at the plans that the Smiths have um, written up and, and been approved. And um, there are smaller houses on the road. There's bigger houses on the road. But the, all the houses that are there have substantial lots that surround them. And um I have to uh, agree that I think that the character of Fire Lane 3 um, being on the lake uh, in, um, would it would really change the character of the beauty of the property and uh, that we live in and all the others that live around us, many of them for many, many years. And I think it would just be putting, I think two houses would be excessive there. I really don't object at all to the Smiths building a home there, but I think Two houses with the septics, um, with the you know the hydrological issues, whatever. I think it's just um, it's really too much for that very um, fragile uh, community. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Um, if I might, you said you your property is twenty five forty seven. Is that correct? Two five four seven. So I'm just looking at the, an aerial uh, image of the area. How do you access your property off the fire lane? Because I see that 2545 basically is the same width um, down the property line right to the fire lane. So I'm just curious how you access your property. We have a right of way. Across uh, 2545? Yes, we both share the same, entr oh, same entrance. Okay. And, and then there's a right of way uh, that we had shared with other people in the community behind us for years um so we are we live right in front of the semos and um so i mean that the trees the uh, all the you know the the wildlife the uh, the whole community um we've lived there really most of our uh lives uh it's a it's um it's a gorgeous community and i think just putting two extra houses in a small lot would really change the character of the community and uh We've always kind of had smaller homes there, but they've had substantial lots, and it's been a comfortable environment to coexist as a community in, and uh, I think it would change the character of the community. All right. Thank you. Thank you. For those uh, here, I think there's one more that's online that's we're just trying to get in.
Okay, we can't seem to get the uh, the last person in. Every time she tries to bring her into the meeting, it says that they're declining to join. Um, what's your name? John Jury. John Jury? Yeah, I think the mayor's just spoken. I'm not too sure though. Yeah. Same thing. I can get him on the phone. That's okay. That's all right. They don't want to join. Okay, so it seems like they don't don't want to join. Um, they probably had similar comments to everyone else. Um, so with that, is there any other comments from committee members? Eric, um, and, and if I could, uh, for the applicant or the agent for the applicant, if you want to pop back up to the front there, that'd be great. All right. All right. Through you, Mr. Chair, maybe may more appropriate at this time to let the applicant address maybe some of the concerns that we've heard from the residents so far sure. before I ask my questions. Thanks. Do you have anything I'm, to comment? Oh, on? I'm just blown away, and I'm just going to take a point at a time. Libby Drury has not been to that cottage in three years. Tim Drury is in a wheelchair and has not been in that cottage for three years. With, 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 hang on. I don't want to get into who lives there and when okay. they live there. They own the property. They have their, their, their chance to stay there. Yeah. Okay. Just please stick to the comments if you want, or if you don't want okay. to comment to their comments, that's fine. But when Mr. we're only going to hear the. Yeah, when Mr. Hang on, let, me, let me finish. Just stick to the application, the severances, and the variances. Okay. If there's points in there that you want to address that pertain to those, fine. If you don't, well, I want to clear fine. up some points that were made about the trees in the lot. First of all, 90% of those trees have to come down because they're not safe. Did a tree not just fall down? Yeah. 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 Oh, sorry. Uh, like, they're dying. All those trees are dying. I can have an arborist come and tell you that they're dying. They've got to come down. I wouldn't build a house any place near them. What this comes down to, to me, is I've got new neighbors who have come in, blown down small houses, built monster homes, that if I went and measured them and did them as per code, they shouldn't have been allowed to build, but they did them. That's fine. And all of a sudden, they don't want two small houses put there. Sorry, like, um, the, your lakefront, you've got your view and everything. I'm trying to put two. It doesn't matter to me. I've got a huge lot there that I could sell for another monster home. That's not what I want to do. I want to build two small houses and give people an opportunity to live there. They conform to everything. We did the most extensive hydrological, that's why I hired Jamie Campbell to do the study for the hydrological, you know, so that we could do it. He said I could put three houses there. I went with two because they fit better. I'm sorry that the neighbors don't like smaller houses, but the bottom line is if you drive along there, Right beside where I'm building, there's a small house. Right beside it, there's an even smaller house. It's not going to change the look of it. It'll maybe upset the new big big homeowners, but this is this just comes down to it. It really infuriates me that new people can come in and then they say, no, you've got to build a big house on this lot. I am legally conforming to everything. A minor variance. It is a minor variance. I build enough to understand something. A minor variance is a minor variance. It is not that I'm having a huge variance over here. It is a small variance for it. And the lots are still minimum 60 feet and 76 feet. If I go on to King Street right now, I can build three lots on a 60 okay. foot one. I'm going to yeah. stop you there because I told you to keep it to these particular applications. Now you're off on King Street. Well, no, I, no, I, 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 I understand yeah. your frustration. I, I understand that part. If, if there's nothing specific to these things, I know well, your opinion, and I've, I've, we've heard their opinions. Okay. We went through this process once. Nobody I, I nobody had any issues. Okay. It doesn't matter what happened in the past. No, no and I, I understand that. Now we're coming up again. There is no reason to not allow for two houses on lots this size. 
I'm sorry, we're not going to build a monster house. We've got two new monster houses that have been built. We're not going to do that. I'm going to build small houses, and we're not, you know, one is going to be for us, the other is going to be for Donna's daughter, okay? It's a family thing. We want to be close together. Geez, sorry, we don't want to build a big house that we both live in together. It, it, the design is there. The, the, from a technical point of view, it meets every criteria possible. The only thing is the neighbors want one big home there. I don't want that. Fair enough. Eric. And I went from nine lots to two. Six. No, it was actually nine lots to two. Where, where does the nine lots come from? Oh, I'd have to go through the, the am I right? Unless you own the cross the street. Yeah. Or across I the used to own across the street. Am I right? Oh, sorry, from six to two. Sorry about that. From yeah. six to right. two. Okay, so with that, Eric? Through you, Mr. Chair, to uh, Ms. Landry. So in dealing with consent applications, you have to apply with this. Consent applications are supposed to have consideration for Section 5124 of the Planning Act, which is the criteria for the subdivisions, um, which outlined that essentially you got to meet provincial policy, but you also got to do uh, the official plan. So when I'm looking at the official plan policy, this is a rural designated land. When you look at the policies for uh, consents or severances in and as well as in intensification and infill would this this would be intensification and infill would it not so when you look at the policies like our, our our staff's planning report really only says yeah you can you're allowed to sever uh, you're allowed to create up to three lots which yeah that's one of the criteria but there's several uh, out there so uh, section 3.4.2 of the official plan uh, you get this intensification may occur on lands designated rural in accordance with the provisions of section 2.4.3 as well as the following a um, and then goes new residential residential development created through seven only before the purpose of creating up to three lots between two existing residential buildings such that and then it outlines four criteria one of them is that the size of each lot is a minimum of one hectare excluding floodplain areas, fish habitat, or other natural heritage features. And three, uh, each new lot complies with the crime requirements of the zoning bylaw as in force and effect at that day of approval of this plan. And then the other, the other two requirements are met by the hydro G study and uh, there's no minimum distance separation formula that applies in this case. So that's one section. And then when you get to the consents to sever in the world, this is where it's it, severances for the purpose of a new rural residential dwelling shall meet the following criteria. It says a maximum of three lots created on the property in existence as of June 16, 2006 meets that. Uh, proposed lots are designed to retain natural feature and vegetation. They're, they're working on that, so that doesn't apply. Each new lot shall be approximately 0.4 hectares unless additional land area is required to support as well as a septic system and protect surface and groundwater features. And uh, number four, for mul multiple residential development proposals of three lots, the minimum lot size shall be one hectare unless it is determined through a hydrogeological study that a smaller lot size can adequately support it. So the hydrogeology would, would deal with that. But um, then there's, there's more policies, but it just seems like the lot size is is very important in, in in this case so i'm just wondering how we're able to how they're able to com be consistent with the policy and and move forward with this through the chair to the the committee member um so we do look at the ability to to move forward with the hydrogeological study um and to establish the, the subject system on the property the the minimum lot size um of, uh, of an acre. That is primarily the reason uh, for that. In terms of the variances, we did look at kind of compatibility with the area. And although these lots are a little bit smaller than the, the adjacent lots, they're not significantly smaller um, than some of the other ones. 
So the, the main component of, of the minimum lot site is really the hydrogeological study. If it can accommodate the, the septic system, um, then it's, it's something that's easier for us uh, to support. If you can't support the hydrogy, um, then a buildable lot for the most part uh, is not, is not, you're not able to, to create it. I guess through you, there's just an, another section where it's applications for new lots or consent shall meet, the, shall meet the following requirements. And one of them is new lot created uh, on an opened and maintained public road. And this is a private road. I, I asked uh, Chris earlier today that yeah. very question, and that only applies to within the urban boundary. Mm -hmm. That's what I was told. But this, there, there are no rural lots in the urban boundary. Exactly. So it doesn't apply. It doesn't have to be but on it, an approved road. But it, this policy is specifically for rural lands. I'm just, that's what yes. I specifically asked that question because the other question that I had is that if these became lots, would you then need a variance to build on an unimproved road? And he said, that doesn't apply to rural areas. Well, through you, if I, I was just curious as to what Denise's opinion would be. Yeah, through, through the, the chair to the committee member, um, I do recall um, Chris taking a look at that in terms of the requirement uh, on approving a road, and, and he did find that um, that is within the urban area uh, for that requirement. Well, that makes sense. I, I guess that makes sense, but it's just then ROP, there's an issue there if it's a requirement in ROP. But um, yeah, it just when it, when it says shall, usually in an official plan, like if it doesn't meet the, those requirements, then you typically need like an official plan amendment in order to, to, to move forward. So I'm just curious as to how this was able to, I guess, move forward that, the way it has. Yeah, th through the chair to the committee member, I have to take a look at the policies that you're referencing just to make sure that they are 100% applicable. Um, our planner did, did do a review of the official plan policies uh, in relation to this to this application to make sure that it does conform. But you are right, if there is something, um, if there's not a, a policy that speaks to um, doing a study uh, or another piece to, to kind of exempt a policy, then typically, yeah, that would require an official plan amendment. But I would have to kind of take a look at the policies, um, committee member, that you're that you're uh, referencing. Just uh, through you, uh, Mr. Chair, to, to staff. I guess I'm I'm disappointed that you know these policies are applicable because of the rule, and they should be outlined. And even if they, like in the staff report, they should be addressed. Uh, whether they say it's not applicable or, or whatnot, you should still be providing some sort of comment to these policies. It's literally rural lands and the policies consents to sever, which is completely applicable in this case. So these policies should be addressed. Um, so, and the fact that they're not, I'm, I'm hesitant to, to, to support the application. Anybody else have any questions? So w with respect to that, uh, Eric, with respect to your comments there, would you like to get further clarification from staff with regards to that before proceeding or? Through you, Mr. Chair, um, I would be open to that. So I would, rather than go the path of refusal, I would be open to hearing staff come back with better address those policies, so yes. Does anyone else have any questions? Um, the only question I have is that currently, and correct me if I'm wrong, you currently have six lots. I'll call them three, I'll consider the one in the front and the one in the back the same. So currently there's three lots there. So. To simplify things, the ask is you're asking really to sever one in the middle in half and merge them with the ones on the side. Space, which would make them larger than the lots on that side of the fire. Yeah, fair enough. Um, I don't 
think the hydrological study that's been done to date addresses if you had three properties on there. And I don't know if it would currently support three, but technically, if we did not approve the severance, he still has three lots of record, technically six lots of record. And if he amended his hydrological study to say, okay, I want to build three houses on here, could it support that? And if, and if the report came back that supported that, then he would be able to build three houses on these lots. Is that a fair statement? Is that a fair statement? Uh, to the chair, my understanding is that technically the lots have actually merged in title uh, and that it's one lot now. If they are still individually, uh, if they are still individual lots, then then yes, um, subject to the to the zoning. Yeah. See, now this is this is where I'm confused because it would seem by the survey that we got, these are already individual lots of a plan of subdivision. So they they shouldn't have merged because there's a subdivision plan that's been approved. And if that's the case, then why in our report do we say that you got to merge these properties together because they're already merged? That doesn't make any sense to me. One doesn't jive with the other. Um, and, and I guess that's where I'm a little conflicted as well. Because uh, if I'll, I'll go to the... Feel free. I have the ability right now to put in a septic system which I could build three houses in. There is no doubt it would be approved and I've got three lots there that I could build them in. There, those are approved lots to build. Don't want to do that because Jamie Campbell told me this is a better system, the one we want to put in, and it's better for the environment. That's fine. But I'm telling you, like, Get ready for three houses because I will fight tooth and nail if this gets, and no threats, but if this gets turned down, I'll use science on my behalf, prove that I can put in uh, septic systems for the three lots. I'll sell three lots. I make more money. I don't want to do that. I lived there for 10 years. Hey, what? sir, if, please. I lived, there, I lived there for 10 years. Things can change, Gino, sorry. But like, if, if it's, I've got three lots, and this is where I'm coming from. I've got three lots that I can build on. They're approved. As long as I can put in, all the region asked for, as long as I can put in a septic system that, that can fit and meet their criteria, I can build on them. Why don't I just do that? And I'll cancel this whole thing. I don't want to do that. I want two houses there. I've made them larger. They're larger than a lot of the houses there. If you drive down Vimy Ridge, there's like 20 houses that are like shoe boxes side by side there. So I've done everything I can. I'm sorry that you own a huge house on the lake and you don't want two small ones. I'll put three then. I mean, like, what, what do you want me to do? Okay, so, so to that point, if he does have three, then shouldn't the application be really just to divide up the middle one and merge the two at the sides? Very similar to what we just talked about on Peter's, Peter's Circle. Yeah. Um, very similar there, right? They took a property, divided, took two, merged one with the other. Is that not very similar to this particular application? Uh, to the chair, I don't have final legal opinion on if those properties merged or not. If those properties merged and we've got one property, then it's a consent to create two. Um, I'm hearing different things from from different people, so right now it's it's best to look at it as the creation of the creation of an additional lot um, from what's there. I, in terms of the legal piece and what people provide in an application, um, it would need a lawyer in order to determine exactly what's happened. Um, if the applicant was to come forward with a building permit, we would have to get a legal opinion in terms of is there actually a lot there, or is it actually like three lots, six lots, one lot. Uh, what is the actual layout? Okay, very good. Eric? Uh, through, through you to maybe the applicant, just th what, what three lots are you referring to that are already approved? Here. I'm sorry. No. Sorry, is, uh, oh, I don't know. Well, sorry, you got, I, I can't. Oh, you can't see? Oh. Well, that what, doesn't show it. This does. If you look at the, the drawing that was given with the application. 
The site sketch you're talking Correct. about this. Yeah, so you'll see, you'll see the three front lots. There's part one, part two, part three. Yeah, oh, besides yeah. the part, see the small little lettering in behind? You're talking about lot 31, 32. Correct. Three, three. Okay. So th three. Um, yeah, so. So from my point. understanding, yeah. uh, sorry to interrupt, from my understanding, those are current lots of record. That's why in the staff report it says two of those have to merge together to get the frontage on, on the fire lane. But my question is, if they're already separate lots, then why do they have to merge? That's, that was my question. And, and to, to Denise's point, they don't legally know that they're separate lots. Um, I'm assuming the tax roll probably calls it on one property and that's maybe what you're basing it on. I don't know, but um, that could be something that, because I, I, like I said, I, the, the applicant is saying he has basically six lots there um, based on, because if you look at the ones in the back, it looks like there was maybe a road allowance or some sort of easement at the back. That's the, I think 57, 58 and 59. Um, but that, that's all I'm getting at is, if, if this does not get approved, could they literally build three properties on that instead of the... So, so Mr. Chair, well, I haven't, I haven't finished yeah. mine. <laughs> I didn't get a chance to say mine. Hang on, like, Eric, did you want to finish first? Yes, I didn't get a chance to say Through you, Mr. I guess my, my, my experience, because I've, I've dealt with these in, in particular, usually these are existing lots of records from an old plan of subdivision that then becomes deemed by the municipality and then those lots merge unless, uh, and then they're, yeah, they'll merge if those lands were owned by the same person or, or entity at the time. And so although I, I have experience where in, in Fort Erie, for example, with similar areas, they don't have a deemed by law, so these lots exist. Um, but I would be very surprised if they don't. But uh, of course, we want to make sure that that is the case. So I completely understand w what you're saying. Um, and even if there are a lot of records, I don't believe you can just put whatever you want on it. You still have to meet the zoning. So 100%. I wasn't yeah. suggesting to put whatever you want. I'm just saying if if you met all the requirements, and these are already lots of record from a plan of subdivision at whatever time that that was made, um, then as long as he meets all the requirements, he could technically build on them mm -hmm. the way they are. And, and that's all the point I was trying to get at. Um, Gary? Square the circle there, but I, I, what I'm saying is that could be the case, but we have an application before us with those specific facts and staff report, and I think we can only deal with what we've been presented in the application and the assumption is true unless shown to the contrary. But I do get your point about if this fell, that could inevitably be, but I don't think that's our concern. Well, I guess to your point, the only reason it becomes a concern is that in the staff recommendation is it says that these lots need to merge. I was just told that they're already merged or possibly already merged. So why do you need to merge them if they're already merged? So there's some inconsistency there whether they are or they're not. And, and quite frankly, I, I'd be in favor of, you, you had a question with regards to the official plan that needs to be clarified. If it's possible that if the, the applicant or the owner can provide evidence that these are actual legal lots of record and that's the way they've been legally described and registered and he owns the three. I can do that right now. Uh, I, uh, that's fine then if, if he can do that and present that at the next meeting, then I think that adds a different perspective to what we're potentially talking about this evening. Sorry. If I could, but why couldn't it be a condition of the consent? And then if it is, it doesn't come back. It's a condition that they must be that way. I, I, get, I think you're, you have a fair point. I'm, I'm just saying it, if they are, the gentleman says he could prove it today, um, even if he couldn't prove it, um, we make that a condition. Well, and, and I guess technically we are based on this. Well, you said about the discrepancy of that uh, wording. Yeah, because that's part four and part five, right? Yeah. The, the two conditions, uh, uh, condition four and five basically says they all have to merge to get this lot and that lot, part one and part two. Mr. Chair, I 
suppose you can make the condition the reverse. Of that, sorry. You can make the condition the reverse if that actually isn't the case. Maybe the applicant can clarify that right now. I think you were going to put forward the, the, the ability to prove that right now. Here's your official lot plan. My tax roll lists all six of them as well, each one numbered. But this is the official Pinecrest Point Albino or Point Edition, and it lists all the lots. I can show you what the, the lot plan says. I can bring you my tax roll, which lists six of them that I pay for every year. Eric? Uh, ooh, sorry, uh, through you, I think we may be getting a little hung up on the condition, like whether or not that condition is there and if it's factual. Um, staff have the ability to just acknowledge that, get that information, because he's going to have to clear that condition anyway, so he would have to provide some kind of legal uh, answer to that, So, and staff have the ability to, if they're satisfied, to then clear that condition. So um, it's, I don't think it's necessarily something that we... Uh, necessarily have to get hung up on this although to the evidence that was provided by the applicant I understand that that's uh, the plan that you provided but it's it appears to be like a, a very old plan that could very much have uh, been deemed in which means means that's an old registered plan of subdivision it was existing at one point in time but has since no longer no this this is still in this is still as of a year ago in your official planning act this is how the, these lots are all separated and divided this is still the way niagara regional under the um, landscape program that you can go in and check the whole area there all those lots are still separate actually they've made a mistake they've already merged them for me the, the, these lots together but in the old one you would see six of them Hang, hang on. just to, to, to your comment that you just made, you said they've already merged them. Because it was approved, and but I went on uh, Netscape. So, sorry, what's been approved? Previous just, just, well, Your microphone, your microphone. Oh. There's a program that uh, Niagara Region uses that you can look at every lot and the building footprint. Um, Niagara Navigator? Navigator, that's yes. it. Sorry, Navigator. But, but that's not a legal source. No, but I, w I was on it today, and I see that they've taken my six and mer merged it. If you look prior to that, you would have seen all six of them separate. And that, that's what I've been looking at on my screen. Yeah, so th this is still the official town plan. I've got six lots there. Fair. That's what we want to change. Okay, so... But, uh, can I say one other thing? Sure. We can talk all we want about this. Folks, there's a way I could still build two houses even though I own all six of them. You know, so, like, I'm not getting into the tech. I know how to build and not get around things, but if I really needed to, it's one big lot that I own, and it fits into it, and I can do everything, and there's nothing that can happen. I'm trying to do this legally. But if you wanted to, as a builder, and you knew what you were doing, you could come and build two structures. Let's not go down that road where I have to fight everybody. I'm trying to do this the common sense way. Okay. So, so with that, any other questions? No. no. Gary. Nope. Eric. Now. Would you prefer that we wait to get a response with regards to the official plan? Uh, yes, I, 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 that way. Otherwise, I don't know if I'll be in favor. I, I, don't, I can't support the application. So, so with that, you, you potentially have one naysayer um, or one against. Um, did you, either one of you have any concerns with regards to the official plan wording? and complying with the official plan? Gary? No. The, the one thing I just did want to check. So, 
just as a brief reminder when it comes to severances. So there's about eight things that we are to consider. One is what's the effect of the development on the matters of the provincial interest? Is the proposal premature and in the public's best interest? Does the proposal conform to the official plan and comply with the zoning bylaw? Are additional variances needed on the retained or severed property to bring them into compliance or conformance? Is it suitable for the site? Adequacy of the road and safety of access, dimensions and shape of the proposed lots, conservation of natural features and flood control, and adequacy of utilities and availability to the municipal services. I think some of them are quite clear that services-wise, uh, there's things in there to mitigate those. Um, so with that, I, I guess the official plan one is the one I'm a little bit caught up on with Eric as well. Gary? I, th I think Eric's comments um, may have some merit, but we do have the chief planner here. And so I'd like to hear her opinion on that as meeting all of the above that you just read. To Denise. Uh, through, the, through the chair to, to the committee, um, I did not uh, prepare the planning report and do the planning analysis in terms of the official plan policies. Um, I did review the official, or did review the report. Um, but I did not prepare it. So unfortunately, I'd have to do a full, a full review myself to confirm if every single policy uh, was addressed in, in the planning report. Then I will withdraw the uh, position that I took now that I've heard from the chief planner. Very good. So with that being said, to Eric's point, do we wish to adjourn this until next meeting and maybe we can get some official word with regards to that for clarification and then we can bring it back next meeting and it hopefully we'll have a supplemental from staff with regards to the official plan and or if additional conditions need to be added to the recommendation. Does that sound reasonable, Gary? Um, I guess I'd like to um, ensure that the applicant who hasn't done anything but fill out the application and apply and has received an answer and a report. Is, sir, are you um, inconvenienced by one month? Yes, it's building season. I, I, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I am. And I, I don't know what... You know, I have a, a plan here from the town I with six lots. I pay on my tax roll for six lots. I don't know how else we can prove it other than you're going to go to the planners and they're going to say, yep, this is our plan because this is the plan. It hasn't changed in five years or ten years. I don't know what else to provide you. I think... Um Always when people go through a process and everyone does their best and the concern about the clearance, the planner who did this is not here. Um, it's a fair concern on our part. I think it's not unreasonable on the applicant's part about building. Um, there's also the other question that could be cleared up with respect to that merge situation of the lots at the same time. However, I think in deference to the applicant um, that we should expedite waiting for another month to perhaps a reasonable amount of time of a week or two weeks if staff would accommodate that. I know that that costs um, extra money to have us all appear, but I think that um, if there is or isn't an error, it's not the fault of the applicant. So I would propose that we would, and I don't know if that's, uh, well, let, let's all, all finish before asking for, uh, if anybody else has a comment for a referral or deferral. We could, Angie. Thank you. I would absolutely go along with what Member Bruno has proposed. I think that is the right way to do this. Eric, you got anything further to that? Considering it was you that started the process. No, I don't think I have anything. So basically, Gary, then to your point is that uh, you'd move that we adjourn for.
until next month to get further details with regards to the merger of the lots as well as the addressing of the official plan comments. Not next month. I, two weeks. So this gentleman can get on with life. You can clear out two things. I, 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 sorry to interrupt. I'm just trying to figure out what are we trying to figure out here? I, for, for the point, there, there's other things that member uh, brought up regarding the official plan requirements that he's not sure if they've been met. Part of our criteria to determine whether we grant the severance is whether the official plan has been met. Wouldn't and, the and people from planning know that? Like, Well, we've asked that question, yeah. and the author of the report is not here, so we can't get a definitive okay. answer on that. And that's why so, we're... So I, 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 I deal with the city a fair amount. Could, uh, is this not a phone call to Chris Room and saying... We're, what, we're, what, we're, not, we're not calling yeah. someone tonight. No, I'm not asking you to call tonight, but I think a month well, is a bit... Well, what Gary's proposing is that we meet in two weeks. I'm fine with that, Gary. Yeah, thank you. And we can readjourn for five or ten minutes, hopefully, and grant that forward. Yeah. Um, so that would be your, your motion on the floor? Yes, Mr. Chair. So with that, I'll look for a seconder, Angie. So the motion on the floor is to adjourn this particular applications, applications um, for two weeks. And uh, that would be, sorry? To what, the motion on the floor? 100%. It's not council, so yeah. you probably could. So I, I just, I'm just checking my calendar, because I may have a conflict. So two weeks would be the 24th and I will not be here. I will be in Winnipeg. <laughs> now, that, now, with that being said, with that being said, I don't have to be here. You, you, there's the three years left that could decide it. I guess what I thought is, this seems to be um, not a phone call, but not necessarily two weeks. So I'll turn to the chief planner and say, can, can you get what doesn't sound to me like a, a lot of work, but I'm, I'm a layperson. Uh, can we do this in one week to, to review the official uh, plan status uh -huh. that Member Beauregard talked about? Procedurally, um, our acting deputy clerk did say she could help us with a, a special meeting. Um, in terms of getting getting additional information out to the committee and meeting the, the procedural bylaw, we would probably have to get it out by um, Thursday or Friday. The um, author of the report um, is back in the office on Tuesday. So I would want to give him a little bit of time to, to take a look at um, and, and listen to the meeting in terms of the comments and prepare something. Just on that, does it need the author of the report to check uh, Member Beauregard's uh, question? Um, through the chair? No, not necessarily. So if the intent, you're trying to set up a meeting for next week, next Wednesday. Let me see if Diana. Sure. Diana's saying we have to provide notice, our acting deputy clerk. We might not have enough time as that's super quick. Just you guys here in 10 days? Sorry. Yeah. I don't want to go beyond the two weeks. And to your point, um, to your point, um, there's nothing wrong with two weeks, but if we can do it less in a sure quorum, then let's do it. So maybe it isn't seven days, it's 10 days. So it doesn't fall on a Wednesday. Did we want to work on scheduling the meeting after the formal committee meeting now? Well, the problem is, if we're about to adjourn this application, we need to know before, because once we adjourn it, then we can't talk about it. So we, we need to either pick a date or go another month or whatever. So if 10 days is doable, why don't we ask the committee now if there'll be quorum in 10 days or in 14 days? If you give me a date, I can tell you. We leave on the 19th. 
and I'm not back until May the 5th. I'm gone for two weeks. But you can still have the three as you need to have four. Yes, that's fine. Um, Eric, you have a question? Yeah, through, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I really don't, I understand what Member Bruno is, is trying to do and, and be accommodating for the applicant. Uh, the thing is, when you look at the conditions for the severance, it's not like he's going to be able, to, as soon as he gets approval, he's going to start being able to build. The, to, to clear these conditions is going to take a long time. In particular, the stage one and two archaeological assessment. Done. And do you have the Ministry of Heritage? Done. Everything is done except... And that's why I'm here for a second time through. Everything has been done except for number six, the owner enter a developmental agreement. Uh, it's done. Everything is done. So I don't need any time. You know, I had it all done and then I was told that your lawyers couldn't get to it quick enough, so I had to spend six grand to come and reapply. Okay. Uh, in that case, if all the conditions, I suppose, the archaeological usually takes a couple of years, so. Um, but if they're done, yep. But then if we can make it earlier, then I'm fine with that. Thank you. So do you have a proposed date? Like I said, I probably won't be here well, for the three years as long as you're... Yeah, here. either one you're not going to be here for. No. Right. So I guess I'll come back to... Can it be at least 10 days, or can it be a little bit shorter? No. The, the well, reason... I, I guess... To, 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 but before we, before we go, if we want an official report from staff, you need 10 days or whatever, right? If, if it's a verbal to us from staff... I'm good with verbal. Don't worry. It's just like someone presenting evidence to us. It's just keeping in mind it's not an official document from the city. They're going to come here. They're going to present it verbally so, to us. Considering verbal, then how long would it? I see. So um, you would receive a verbal report from staff instead of a, a written? We could. Um, it's no different than asking you the questions tonight and getting into the answers. Yeah. Just you're, you're not going to be here, so that's out. Yeah. Two weeks meets all the requirements. Can you have it written? Two weeks. That's okay. Um, sorry, we're looking at the special meeting requirements. Our acting deputy clerk is saying minimum, minimum 10 days, most likely two weeks is better based on all the requirements. So as long as the year three is be the 24th. Okay. Three. So Dave might also be the fourth. Dave can't. Dave can't come, and he wasn't here for this meeting. Oh, that's right, sir. So we'll have three. He could, if you're one of these two, don't show up. He could come to make quorum. He just can't vote on the application, and it would be down to that's just two. True. That's true. He could we need quorum to start the meeting. You don't you need, need quorum finish. to finish yeah. it off. Yeah. Let's do that. Two weeks. Two weeks. So two weeks. Twenty-four. So April twenty-fourth, so six o'clock. Yes, sir. Okay. So the motion on the floor to adjourn the application till April the twenty fourth, six o'clock. Chambers. All right. We good. All those in favor? That'll be carried. Great. Applications adjourned. And just a reminder that um, committee members, we can't talk to uh, each other or applicant or we can get clarification from staff or whatever. But um, all right. Very good. Other business, Eric. Yeah, th through you, Mr. Chair. So uh, the Ontario Association of Community of Adjustments and Clerks, or <laughs> I forget what it is, the OCA uh, conference is going to be happening in June, uh, 2nd to 5th, I believe it is, in Windsor. I am expressing interest in going to that. And um, I've expressed interest to, I believe, Taya, I sent you that email. And I think I copied Dan. Uh, but he, Either way, uh, just I'm interested in going, and, and uh, hope I'm wondering if any of the other committee members are as well. No, no, June second to fifth. Oh, I'm sorry. In Win at Windsor. June second to fifth in Windsor. Yeah, definitely. I'm at FCM. 
And I went last year, so I'm, I'm good. <laughs> through, uh, through, through you, Mr. Chair, then uh, if any materials that I get, or uh, I'll be happy to share with the, the committee, and uh, I could provide a verbal report afterwards, similar to what we do as council, if anything important that I've learned that may be of useful to the committee. Um, anything else? Other business? Not seeing any. Um, sorry. Approval of the minutes, uh, March minutes, mover and a seconder. Angie, Gary, any questions, comments? All in favor? That'll be carried. And with that, I will adjourn this. Thank you all.